Welcome back to Switched to Linux. Today we're going to be talking about the release of Fedora 29 Beta with uh, GNOME 3.30. And uh, I believe this is the first Fedora with this version of GNOME, being as that it just came out very recently. And uh, this brings some improvements to how Fedora is supposed to work. It's supposed to also greatly reduce the, uh, the system resources. So we're going to double check on that. So before we dive in and look at the distro itself, here's the release announcement. I'll go ahead and put this down in the description down below. And uh, you can come over here and we'll just kind of highlight some of, the, some of the, the basic things. First is modularity has been imported into the desktop uh, workstations as well. This is something that was in the servers already. So it basically allows you to run uh, a variety of different applications uh, utilizing any type of um, uh, any development branch. So uh, you can look for that and uh, there's information here. You can uh, read through the documentation or listen to the podcast about how some of the modularity works. Uh, with GNOME 3, they have a, new, a couple new features in here. There's a new podcast app. I did not see this installed by default. So we're gonna go ahead and install it and have a look at that. Um, and then it will automatically update flat packs in the software center. So if you are a person that likes the flat packs, uh, that is now updated in the software center. And uh, we have Fedora Atomic Workstation, rebranded as Fedora Silver Blue. Uh, the Grub menu will be hidden if there's only one OS on the, uh, on the uh, computer. And it will include update versions of popular packages, just a variety of different basic updates. So if you are a Fedora user uh, or just a Linux beta tester in general, uh, go ahead here and uh, read about how to file a bug report. Um, or get some more information on the project. So let's go ahead and uh, boot this guy up and then we will have a look at what it looks like. Okay, so we are on the login screen. Now I've already installed this and set it up once. I did not push updates, I didn't change anything else. And uh, as, the, as are the previous ones and a correction to my previous videos, on Fedora you can still come over here and choose the GNOME, GNOME Classic, or GNOME on Xorg. So of course the basic default is Wayland. That is a correction to my previous videos. I did not see this option there at one point in time. I think it showed up after a system update. Uh, we can also access our internet volumes and things like that and we have our accessibility. So if you need to change anything, uh, zooming, key, be, key readers, any of that type of stuff, you can enable that right here before you even log into the system. All that is pretty standard. So let's go ahead and type in my super secret password that's not Fedora. Uh, I really do like the desktop wallpaper they give us this time. This is just a beautiful piece of artwork. Absolutely love this. Uh, it's just just gorgeous looking. Uh, before we do anything else while I'm thinking of it, we want to have a quick look at the uh, system resources. And uh, I just want to see is it as lightweight as they are saying it is. Like I said, they, they did say that it, they've made some changes to make it a much lighter weight. Now it's still running in at 1.2 gigabytes, meaning it is still the, uh, I think the most system heavy um, desktop environment. But uh, I don't even know if that's reduced or not, to be honest. Uh, it might be reduced if we go back to Xorg. I don't know. Uh, so as far as the software, nothing else here has really changed. Like I said, they were supposed to have this new podcast tool, but we still just have Rhythmbox installed. So let's go ahead and boot up the software center and uh, see if it's, it's in there. Maybe it's just not installed by default. Now, one of the first things that you'll notice if you come up to the software center and click on your software repositories, this is where we have some of the modular stuff comes into place. We have the modular, we have test updates, updates, and I don't know as much about all of the modular stuff, how all that's working. Uh, we did have the option to install the third party repositories um, right when you first started. And so um, we basically, added these, but they're all disabled. So if I wanted to install Google Chrome, I can enable that and install it. If I needed to do uh, Steam or NVIDIA drivers, I could go ahead and, and um, do those as well. And not sure what that one is, but anyway, uh, those are repositories as well. So these guys are enabled. Um, let's go ahead and search for that podcast. 
thing. See, I don't see it in here anywhere. I That's making me sad. G Potter is the one I've used. I also use um, Rhythm Box. So, um, yeah, again, we were supposed to have this new, they, they talked about this new thing. It was in the release notes and it was in the GNOME 3 uh, release notes, but I'm not seeing it as an option. I'm not seeing it as something I can install. So kind of makes me sad. Uh, not sure where that happens to be. Um, but overall, uh, looking at our system settings here, uh, they do have now in GNOME 3, let's just verify we're on GNOME 3.0. GNOME 3.0, we are. All right. Uh, some of the things that they've done is they have added uh, Thunderbolt, Thunderbolt 3 support. That is one of the other new things added to this. This is, let's see what that one looks like. Ooh, that's pretty. That's cool. I like that. We're going to keep that. I really like the original one as well, but give some nice, uh, nice images there for backgrounds. Uh, notifications. I don't think anything here has changed. Uh, search functions. You can turn on or turn off various elements of search. These are the defaults. Uh, of course, under privacy, uh, location is you are enabled. Uh, you you are able to choose whether you want location services on or off and problem reporting on and off. Those are turned on, but you can get them on and flip them off by default when you first start out. Uh, online accounts, one of the greatest things that has been changed in this, and it's not 3.30, but it's the previous version. Uh, the version that is implemented into the new Cinnamon, when you in, uh, enable your next cloud build, this will sync not only your files now, it will also sync your contacts and it will sync your calendar. So if you are looking to use something like Nextcloud to make sure you're de google or de whatever -ing your life, you can actually use Nextcloud now to sync your contacts and your calendars into with your computer as well. You can still connect all of your other type of accounts as, uh, as has always been the case. And let's just see if there's anything else in here that strikes me as being new. Uh, the Thunderbolt, this is new. Uh, of course, there's no Thunderbolt in this computer, but if you were to be running this on something that has, has Thunderbolt ports, that is something that uh, that is enabled um, in this new system here. Mouse and touchpad and there's displays, keyboards. I don't see the tablets in here like I used to, but... Uh, I don't ever remember exactly where they were. All right. Um, one of the things that I'm a little bummed about is the later versions of GNOME are pretty much just completely disabling using the desktop. That is for me a, um, a kind of a deal breaker for me. I need to be using my desktop. I'm not sure if I were to install um, GNOME Tweak Tool if that would actually um, fix that or not. I have heard it does not. I don't know. So we're just going to go ahead and test that out right now. Let's install the tweak tools. Um, you know what? While we're here, let's go ahead and look at the software repositories again. Sometimes it does take a while to load the repositories. Yeah. Okay, let's try that again. I want to see if there's an extra repository I might need to enable for that podcasting tool. I wanted to look into that. This is the problem I've, I've been encountering. It might be because this is a new beta release. A lot of people might be testing it right now. Sometimes it's just taking a long time. We're not going to wait for that to wait for that to go. Let's go ahead, though, and boot up. Oop, I missed. Boot up the tweaks and see if I can enable desktop uh, icons on this or not. I've heard you can't, but I don't know if that's true. So, extensions. OK, 
Okay, themes, icons, shell, background. Yeah, there's pr my guess is there, there might be an extension that enables that. But, you know, for me, that's kind of a, a deal breaker. I work off of the desktop extensively, and I don't like it when you start pulling things away from the system. Uh, and, I, and I've been vocal before about not really liking the approach that GNOME takes where they keep the core very basic and then you need to rely on third-party extensions to kind of build out a lot of the functionality that a lot of people want. So uh, that's kind of a, a personal preference thing, but that's where I kind of go and lean toward. Uh, let's see, there's State College, Pennsylvania. Let's see what the weather does. All right, 66 overcast. Well, it definitely overcast out here. I'm not sure if it's 66, but there's a nice weather application, so that's nice. All right, everything else, uh, there's some adjustments to the, um, to the file manager as well. It will automatically resize spacing. Uh, you can see that resizes spacing like that, and uh, we do have a few options there. I'm holding down control and rolling the mouse wheel to scroll like that. You can also come into here, I think, and adjust the icons this way. All right, we can sort A to Z, Z to A, last modified type. We can show hidden, reload. We can convert to list or um, the other view. All right, and there's other locations. Let's see if I can access my server. So I can't access my server, we're not gonna log in, but uh, it does look like I can access my net shares. So that's pretty good. All right, last thing we're gonna do, let's go ahead and uh, log out, and then we're gonna log back in under the uh, the X org and see if that helps the system performance a little bit. And it, it is seeming smoother, it looks like it's not giving me quite as much, um, it, it's, it's not freeing up system RAM, but it doesn't feel as sluggish as Fedora used to. So I can say that it's uh, overall, it, it is a pretty good experience. Uh, if you like this type of modern desktop, it looks like something crashed. So GSD smart card crash, please contact the developer if you wanna report it. Well, I, I have, have enabled automatic problem reporting. So let's go ahead and report that. That'll uh, help them out. Uh, yes, let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna go ahead and do that since it's a beta release. Gonna go ahead and uh, submit a bug report for them. All right, now, let's see. Well, I kinda of want this done first. After this is done, I don't, I don't wanna pull up the system monitor until this is done running. Stop that, stop that, just close that. So changing to Xorg, it's actually using more memory right now than it was on, on Wayland, uh, which I don't know, might be expected, might not be. Um, but anyway, uh, this is the new Fedora beta release. I can say overall, um, I'm still not a Fedora fan. Uh, as you guys know, I'm not a fan of the GNOME desktop um, specifically and uh, Fedora to me, it's just it just rolls too much. It updates too much. It breaks itself too much, and I just need a little bit more personal predictability. There's a lot of people that really like this, and this is certainly for a lot of people. It's not my personal cup of tea. Um, but that being said, uh, if you are a beta tester or you really like Fedora, don't go ahead and double check this guy. It does run a little bit smoother to me. It is feeling like a better system than Fedora 28. Um, and for being a beta, that's, you know, that's good. And uh, it's looking pretty good. Everything seems to work. I always have maps crash on me. Let's see if maps crashes or not. All right. There we are. So, yeah, it's actually working out pretty good. Yeah, there we are. 
There's the campus right there. And there's your there's your famous football stadium right there. There you go. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's see. So there's that. Um, yeah. Everything else seems pretty normal. Um, I'm curious where that podcasting application is. I don't see it in the repo. I don't see it um, installed on the system. Let's go ahead and search for it one more time. I think it was just called podcast, but kind of sad, kind of sad, kind of sad. Hey, there's the repos again. Test updates, Fedora, modular x86. Yeah, I don't see anything right out of the way on that. So that's kind of the only thing I'm noticing. Um, eh, I don't know. Well, anyway, uh, there is Fedora 29 Beta. If you are a beta tester or you really like Fedora, go ahead and have a look at it. Don't forget to support the project if you do like this system and use it a lot yourself. And uh, submit those bug reports. Make sure the system is pretty good on its way out. So thanks for watching this video. You can help support this channel at switchtolinux.com forward slash support. You can check me out on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Tom M. And don't forget to check out our shop, shop.switchtolinux.com. You can pick up very cool things like this nice snazzy mouse pad. All right, we will catch you guys later. I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.